Okay, so we keep doing quadratic equations and today we'll consider quadratic equations with no real solutions. So I just remind you that quadratic equation is expressions equals to zero and this expression has a power 2 for the leading term x squared. So that's how you judge about type of the equations. Okay, so we have the standard form or what is called general form. So this is general form. And just remember, if we use quadratic formula to solve that, let's remember. So quadratic formula to solve that. We will use x equals minus b plus minus square root of the discriminant over 2a. So instead of discriminant, we consider that expression, which is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so how to estimate the possible number of solutions? So we are talking about how many solutions this equation might have. We consider, so number of solutions, we just consider discriminant, exactly this expression, what's written here, and we are simply saying, okay, if the discriminant is negative, no solution, right? No solution. Actually, solution does exist, or solutions do exist, but they might be complex. So, because probably you students and you guys know, don't know what complex number is, because this is not for GCC definitely. So, we just consider the following. We only on real line, so number line, only about real numbers. So real numbers. And that's why when we say there is no solution, or there are no solutions, we actually mean that there, there are no real solutions, okay? Complex solutions might be, okay. So anyway, we are focused on real number line, and right now, this is the tool how to estimate whether your equation, quadratic equation, has solution or it doesn't have. All right, so let's consider a simple example now. We have x squared plus 2x, and let's say plus 3 equals 0. So in terms of discriminant, we just can calculate expression b squared minus 4ac. In this case, we just match with the general form from where we can consider that coefficient a just simply one, right? There is actually a number that we multiply by x squared and it's not zero, just keep in mind because otherwise the leading term becomes zero completely. So b is two and c is three. All right, so we know all the coefficients and let's calculate discriminant. b squared is four minus four ac, which is four times three times one, so we'll get minus 12 in the in total. So we'll get finally negative 8. So discriminant is negative. So the, the theoretical basis tells you that no real solution. Okay, so we have the tool to estimate whether equation has solutions or what it doesn't have. Okay, but now I'll give you the picture, actually, because many people and many students have some, you know, wrong understanding where no solution means. It means that if they cope with parabolas, so if you have y from x equals, let's say in our case, it has the equation x squared plus 2x and plus 3. And so many students calculate discriminant and when they found out that there are no solution, it means that that was like misleading outcome they trying to give. So no parabola exists. No parabola exists. So I mean the the function doesn't exist. That their outcomes. So actually the outcome is completely wrong. Because look, this is wrong actually. So what actually are we doing? We are saying that the left hand side, which is the function y from x equals to zero. So we basically consider this equation y from x equals zero. In other words, we're looking for zeros 
of the function. Of the function. So what it means, zeros of the function. If I set up y and x coordinates, basically the Cartesian plane, we are talking about zeros of function. Let's say your parabola goes something like that. And we're looking for x points of intercept with x axis. So in this case, if there is no solution, what it means? It means that there are no zeros. No zeros of the function. So y from x basically can never be equal to zero. It means that in your case, parabola, according to what you have here, according to the form so of the equation, parabola is completely above x-axis, all right? So it means that there is there are no points of x-intercept. So your parabola is completely above x-axis. And because y-intercept, actually, this number tells you about y-intercept, is here, so your parabola goes something like this. It doesn't intersect with x-axis. So actually, to be precisely, you can even calculate the vertex x vertex coordinates. To be precisely, it's minus b over 2a. That means in reality, negative 2 over 2 means simply negative 1. And this is your axis of symmetry. So that's why the real parabola will look like this. Okay, That's your actual parabola for your case. But it, anyway, it doesn't have any zeros or x-intercept. So it doesn't have. It has only just y-intercept. That's always the case. But x-intercept, there is simply no x-intercept. And that means parabola does exist. Okay? However, no x-intercept. That how you can apply quadratic equations with no real solutions. That simply means that your parabola does exist, but it doesn't have any x-intercept. Okay, so let's consider several examples. Oh, wait, you need to show probably that quadratic equations have no real solution. For example, let's take this one, negative 2x, let's take the first one, negative 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. So I prefer not to have leading coefficient to be negative, so I just simply multiply by negative 1 in order to... Uh, make the leading coefficient to be positive. So in this case, I'll get 2x squared minus x and plus 1 equals 0. And now I just use discriminants in order to estimate the, does this equation have solutions or it doesn't have. So discriminants b squared minus 4ac. So b, so let's say a is 2, b is negative 1, and the last c is 1. So let's complete discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, so in this case it's going to be 1, because negative 1 squared is simply 1, it's a positive number, and minus 4ac, which is 8. So we'll get negative 7 in this case. Okay, so discriminant is negative, so no real solution. Okay, so let's also consider my favorite case when you have let's say x squared plus 16 equals to 0. So many many people use to apply the formula like a squared minus b squared. However, there is no negative sign and simply you are not able to use that. So don't use that because it doesn't work. Okay, so let's analyze simply. Remember, we used before the equations in the simplest form. So x squared equals k. Just let's consider x is simply plus minus square root of k. In our case, 
how to get this form of the equation. We'll just need to transfer 16 to the other side and we'll get x squared equals negative 16. So from where we just simply evaluate the square root of negative 16. However, the square root of negative number doesn't exist. It doesn't exist as so on the real number line. So that's why it's impossible to evaluate. So it's not possible to evaluate. That means actually again no real solution. No real solution. So you can also solve that using the following methods. So just method of estimation. You have x squared plus 16 and let's estimate. Is there any like number instead of x so that you plug and in addition with 16 you'll reach 0? So no real number. So for example, the minimum value for x squared is simply 0 because x squared is more equal than 0. On top of that, you add 16. So in combinations, it definitely, x squared plus 16 is definitely more than 0. It can never be 0. In this case, again, no real solution. Okay? So I hope you understand what no real solution means. And actually, you need to be able to distinguish whether equation has or doesn't have any solution. Just test for discriminant. Use that shortcut for discriminant and estimate how many solutions it might have. In this case, in multiple cases that I show you, actually equations don't have discriminant to be positive. It always was negative, so no real solution. And I hope you understand graphical presentation. What if the function, when we try to find its zeros, uh, don't have real solution? So it means function doesn't have any zeros. So graphically it means no x intercepts. So there is no, there are no any common points with x intercept. It's completely above or in case of the leading coefficient is negative, it completely below x-axis. Alright, so hope you enjoy this short explanation. Just keep practicing, keep practicing with quadratic equations in different forms, try to apply different methods. So in most preference, this is quadratic formula or factorizing. So less likely that you'll be applying a completing square because it's the most complicated unless you're um, like directly asked to do so. So try to use those two approaches and you'll think, I'll think you'll just do it very, very fast with no problems. Okay, hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video to anyone who's interested in math. Peace.